having a small mic issue. So like, just let me know if you can't hear me in the chat and I'll, I'll try and monitor that. That, 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 yeah, that'll be fine. I'll let, I'll let you know if I, uh, uh, if you cut in and out. So again, thank you just for, for, uh, coming tonight for, uh, just a lightning, uh, one-on-one, uh, introduction. It's my pleasure. So without further ado, I'll get started on this talk called, uh, that I'm titling plugging into the lightning network. And I'm also going to show my uh, website, which is satbase.org, which has tips and tricks for routing nodes. So the, the main questions that I was prompted with for this talk are, uh, what is the Lightning Network? How can I use the Lightning Network? How does it function? And at the end, where is it headed? And I think I'll be spending the most time on how does the Lightning Network function. Um, and that's, this is at a high level, and we're not going to get into the real specifics. So disclaimer, high level functional overview, not super technical. I'm not a developer. I'm mostly a user. So do your own research. Um, as always, don't trust verify. Uh, just a quick reminder that Lightning is still kind of reckless, but it is getting better. and the whole protocol is changing rapidly and all of the content here uh, may change, but I'm trying to focus things on the things that will stay constant. But uh, once again, we're at the bleeding edge of this technology. So what is the Lightning Network? It is a possible scaling solution for Bitcoin. Um, so that will, you know, Bitcoin network is currently limited to about seven transactions per second. And this can take it a step further to essentially be unlimited. Um, in addition, there's increased divisibility. So we've got Satoshis or SATs uh, under Bitcoin. Um, the Lightning Network allows us to focus down to like millisats. So thousands of a Satoshi. Also, uh, it is a rapid settlement solution. So a typical transaction on the Bitcoin network is gonna be 10 minutes, but uh, here we're looking at definitely under a minute, um, which, which makes it much more convenient for uh, like in-person transactions. There's also a privacy improvement to it. Uh, we're not able to see individual transactions, but you would be able to see on-chain activity. So that'd be opens and open channel, closed channel. We'll talk about more about that later. And essentially these are smart contracts um, on Bitcoin. That's, that's what Lightning Network is. So how can I use the Lightning Network? There's a couple of different solutions um, or ways to get onto the Lightning Network. The first one is custodial Lightning wallets. And those are gonna be the most user-friendly. Uh, second to that is the non-custodial mobile wallets, which are also pretty user-friendly. Um, the third one is like full control lightning wallets. I'm, that's what I'm calling it. But those are the ones that can be routing nodes. So this is non-custodial and you are managing channels. So it's a lot more complex. And then the fourth, which uh, has kind of popped up pretty recently, is the lightning backend and the only one that I really know of right now is uh, Strike. Hey, hey, just oh, perfect. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, uh, for custodial Lightning wallets, uh, diving deeper into this, um, custodial means it is uh, you don't really own the funds. So not your keys, not your coin. Um, so don't store large amounts. But uh, kind of as a trade-off, these are extremely user-friendly. Um, my personal favorite right now is Blue Wallet, and I'm recommending that to folks because your, uh, your on-chain, your regular Bitcoin funds um, are actually non-custodial. So you hold the keys to those, but the Lightning funds are custodial. And they've been Im implementing new features all the time. Uh, if you're a Telegram user, you can use a bot called LNTX bot, which is just a fantastic uh, resource. So you can tip people in chats. Um, you can also do a little bit of gambling with their like, coin flip uh, function. 
Um, and you can also import that LNTX bot activity into Blue Wallet, which I've been playing with recently. Uh, the last one is Wallet of Satoshi. I haven't used that, but I've heard other people use it. Uh, the next one I'm calling non-custodial mobile wallets. So these are kind of a user-friendly solution that eliminates your need to manage channels. Um, and uh, let's see, I saw Moon Wallet, which is that the blue M over there. Uh, they recently uh, let out a uh, Moon 2.0, which means like you've got sort of a single balance. So it kind of mixes both on-chain Bitcoin and uh, Lightning Network funds. And uh, I'm not totally sure how they do it, but I, I enjoyed the original Moon Wallet. Uh, it wasn't my absolute favorite wallet, but uh, I'm kind of excited to try out their new 2.0. Uh, the other one that's popular is Phoenix Wallet and, uh, and Breeze Wallet. Those are both very user-friendly wallets. Okay, routing nodes. Um, let's see, this is, this is my bread and butter. Uh, where you're, you're managing channels. These are non-custodial completely. Um, and you can also participate in the liquidity marketplaces, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, but those, that's like the really exciting stuff right now for Lightning, which is like pool and loop, those types of things. So the, the hardware for that, um, there's two uh, Raspberry Pi solutions. Actually, I think all of them are Raspberry Pis. Uh, there's Raspi Blitz, which is uh, pretty easy to deploy. There's Raspi Bolt, uh, which is you're doing, you're entering every single line of these codes and, and building it yourself. Then there's also Noddle and Umbral, which are more plug and play. Yeah, we just did a Umbral presentation last, or two weeks ago, I believe, and um, uh, trying to get people on, on to uh, uh, start, start providing some liquidity in these channels. So that's our next step. <laughs> I'd also just like to mention that Umbral, one, one of the nice things about that is it's not only for Raspberry Pis, it also runs on any, um, any, Linux, any flavor of Linux. Um, I personally run it on a Debian um, computer. So Fantastic. I like Umbral because of that. Awesome. Uh, any questions so far on, on this stuff before I move on to the nitty gritty? Okay. I think you're good. All right. Well, I, I've got a question. I, I've got one. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, what's the lightning network? No, I'm ah. kidding. You can keep going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. How does the uh, lightning network function? So there, there's two parts to this that I'm going to cover. The first one is we're going to kind of get in depth about channels. And next, we're going to talk about routing. OK, how does Lightning Network function? So basically, these are agreements that are made between users that are called channels. And those channels are formed in an on-chain transaction. And they're also closed in a secondary on-chain transaction. And you can have an unlimited amount of transactions between that channel open and the channel close. And those transactions that are, would be lightning transactions happen outside the blockchain. So if you're watching the blockchain, all you're seeing are sort of like the, the net. Um, so it's, you would you see funds go in, and then at the end of the channel, you would see funds go out, kind of just settling all those intermediary transactions. So I'm gonna introduce Alice and Bob here uh, for our channel. Uh, Alice here opens a channel with Bob. We're gonna make it a million sats. So I'll, I have one M sats, that's how I shorten it. Um, and so Alice pays 1 million sats to a wallet that Alice and Bob control. So it's, it's essentially a two of two multi-signature wallet that they have going. And Alice and Bob both sign a payout agreement. So since Alice supplied the funds here, Alice gets 1 million sats 
and Bob gets zero sats. And so that, that uh, closing transaction can actually be broadcast at any time by either of the parties. So it could be Alice or Bob that say, says, I wanna terminate this relationship and we can settle up on the blockchain. So the individual lightning payments are just updates of that payout agreement. So Alice pays Bob 250 sats via lightning. And you can see that instead of Alice having the whole 1 million sats, she's got the 750 and Bob has the 250. So that would be a payment from Alice to Bob. Now the local balance and the remote balance together form the channel capacity. And just a quick note, I'm just for simplicity purposes, I'm gonna ignore the commit fee, which is a sort of reserving a balance to pay that force close. So a quick question. Now, since we know that the total capacity is 1 million sats, What's the maximum lightning payment that Bob can pay to Alice? Anybody? Two million? Go, go ahead, Rick. I'm just guessing, 250,000. 250,000 is, is the yeah. answer. Thank you so much for volunteering for that. And, and again, that's because, that, that's just because that's only what was brought into the channel, which was 100% funded by Alice. So if Bob brought more on his end, it would increase, correct? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's governed by that initial uh, on-chain transaction forming the channel. So the capacity of the channel can never change throughout the life of the channel. So it always has to add up. So you got local and remote, and those always add up to the capacity. Uh, plus that commit fee, which I'm ignoring for this. Got it. Thank you. All right. So channels, uh, Alice and Bob's nodes must be online to send or receive. So if you're, uh, if you're running your own routing node, it's, it's gotta be online all the time. Uh, and payout updates in a channel cost zero fees. So between Alice and Bob, uh, they're not going to charge any routing fees uh, since it's just between them two. And just a warning here, uh, if your node goes offline, the funds may be stolen from, from your channel when publishing old channel states. So, you know, both Alice and Bob have uh, a copy of all those previous uh, channel states of like where that payout agreement actually landed. So they could publish it at any time. Uh, so the defense against that is watchtowers, uh, which be, would be able to publish a penalty transaction, which would say, ah, you cheated. I'll be able to steal all the funds for you. But that's a side. There are some uh, wallet, waiting wallets that have watchtowers built in, like uh, BLW does that. And then if you use BLW, uh, you don't even have to worry about channel closures because you've got a watchtower built into your wallet. That's all, and uh, that watchtower is always online. It's one of the nice features of that one. That's a fantastic note. Thanks. I've got a, I've got a quick question. It may, yeah. it, may, it may be obvious, but this is all new stuff to me. So you said that uh, when you open a channel, between the time you open the channel and close it, that you can have unlimited amount of transactions. Is that what I heard you say? Yep. Okay. So when when that transact when that when you chose when you cl close that uh, channel, is that when everything gets sent to through the blockchain? So or does it get sent little by little each transaction or is it everything that you've done gets sent at once? Uh, let's see. So there's like, there's payment payout ag agreements uh, that are sort of updated constantly throughout the life of the channel. And uh, so that payout agreement 
uh, both, both sides will have the latest copy of that. And if you broadcast uh, that payout agreement, that's going to finalize saying like, for example, Alice getting two, 750 and Bob getting 250. So that uh, broadcasting that, that payout agreement in a force close uh, will, will sort of, uh, that'll dictate what those amounts are to each of the channel parties. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, you answered my question. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Another way to put that is that uh, at the at the end of uh, during a channel closure, there's only one transaction that goes on the blockchain, and that that one transact it's it's not like if you did a thousand transactions in the meantime you're not going to broadcast a thousand different transactions when you close the channel you only broadcast one, and that one transaction is a rather small size. Um, all it says is you know Bob gets Bob gets his share and Alice gets her share, whatever they whatever their latest agreement was. Um, and, it, and it's a pretty small transaction. It's two inputs and two outputs, or no, one input and two outputs. Um, that's it. One of them goes to one of Bob's addresses. One of them goes to one of Alice's addresses. Unless you do force closures, which is probably coming up soon. And those are, those are more complicated. Yeah. Uh, I think just before we started the recording, we were talking about um, the, the griefing attack and whatnot, where you might have pending uh, pending uh, payments happen. And those, uh, those recently are in the latest version of l and those pending payments used to be separate on-chain transactions that would happen in a force close event. But, uh, but now those pending transactions will be batched together, which is a big improvement. Yeah, very big improvement. Any more questions before uh, getting into routing? You can always ask questions at the end as well. Okay. Go right ahead. All right. So payments on the Lightning Network can hop between channels. And routing nodes can charge fees for uh, the use of their channels. So we're going to introduce a third character, Carol. And so Bob has another 1 million sat channel open with Carol. Alice and Alice can pay Carol using Bob's channel. And Bob can charge a lightning routing fee for that service of routing that payment. And there could actually be many, many hops uh, that it could just sort of chain together. Uh, but we're just going to try and keep it simple for this. I think the current limit is 12. Okay. So for routing, we're going to introduce some numbers here. Here we have Alice with 750. Bob has, uh, Bob's total balance on Lightning is split between two channels. He's got 250 with Alice, and he's also got 500K sats with Carol. So altogether, his Lightning balance is 750, and Carol has the 500. So we're going to have Alice pay Carol 250 sats and a lightning fee to Bob, which I'll have my little high voltage symbol or lightning symbol. So that payment reduced Alice's local balance and made that payment over to Carol. And so you can kind of see that, that Bob's, uh, Bob's local balance changed here and Carol's local balance increased. So, and overall, Bob also charged a routing fee right there. Bob's balance didn't change very much from before. He just now has a small routing fee that he charged. And just a particular note, uh, Alice's, uh, she, she paid that routing fee over here on this side. One thing that I think is and, cool about uh, this is that uh, in other other payment channel networks on other blockchains, uh, the routing fee is is not charged in the native currency of the blockchain. It's uh, they like create a token for that, but on Bitcoin's Lightning Network, 
um, bitcoins are the um, the currency you get paid in when you charge a routing fee. And so you uh, his his balance is not seven hundred fifty thousand sats plus uh, some other lightning token. It's seven hundred fifty thousand sats plus a couple more sats that he charged as a routing fee. And I think that's a unique property of Bitcoin's Lightning Network. Or it's not entirely unique. Litecoin Network also does that, but like Ethereum's doesn't. In Ethereum, in Ethereum's Lightning Network, you have to pay. Uh, you have to you have some of the of their Lightning Network's currency in order to pay your routing fee. Paid. Fascinating. Thank you, man. It's really nice to have you here. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, so Bob charges Alice that lightning fee based on the hop to Carol. So on that secondary hop, uh, Bob has that uh, routing fee rate that he charges uh, to use that channel with Carol. And uh, so this first hop, that payment update is free, but then paying for that second hop, that's where that lightning fee a cruise. Okay, here's a pretty tough question. Um, I don't expect people to get this right, but what is the maximum that? Oh no! <laughs> uh, oh, that sort of oh. the answer. Uh, what is the <laughs> maximum that Alice can pay Carol, uh, ignoring fees? Um, so, anybody guesses? Somebody go. So, somebody go and guess. <laughs> well, when you when you say um, ignoring fees, are you saying we ignore the fee that she paid to Bob? Yeah. Okay, then uh, a million sats. So here, Alice has a local balance total of five hundred thousand sats. 500k and uh so that's all of her balance on lightning okay okay yeah that uh, and she wants to make that hop over to carol uh, but now each of these channels are limited by uh one million sats so the capacity can't increase beyond that uh total capacity so when alice tries to go and pay 500k sats to carol it's actually gonna fail. And that's because Carol doesn't have enough inbound liquidity here. So that's the limiting factor. So a maximum of that 250,000 sats can be paid. Because as soon as she gets 250 of those 500, her channel is now full. She'll, she'll have 1 million sats and yeah. a, a channel can only go up to that to that, to that million, if, if that's what you originally put into it, it can only go up to that original amount. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I had the, that red circle introduced. Otherwise, it would be a much more difficult, uh, difficult question. Um, so, uh, it was difficult. yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Um, so, yeah, this is a pretty important concept. And that really shows the value of inbound liquidity. Uh, when Alice goes to pay, she can't actually see this channel between Bob and Carol. All she knows is she wants to pay Carol. Uh, that's her destination. She doesn't really know how it's going to get there. Um, and she would experience an error that would say temporary channel failure. Like, what does that mean? Oh, it's usually a liquidity issue. So as I said, Alice can't see the balance of Bob's channel to Carol and she will experience a payment failure for payments larger than that 250,000. One analogy that I'd like to use here is, um, is an analogy about uh, measuring cups. Um, when you put in a bunch of Bitcoins into a channel, uh, the channel is now full. It's, it's full of the money that you put into it. And uh, you can't receive anything into a cup um, or, a, or a measuring cup that's already full, right? So when you first put in Bitcoins into a channel, you can't receive anything. What you have to do is empty that channel or, or, or spend some. You have to pour some of, the, some of the sats out of the channel and into somebody else's wallet, um, like by buying stuff, for example. Um, and then once you've done that, once you've spent some, 
now your channel's not completely full anymore. So you can receive up to up to that, you know, if you poured out half, for example, if you poured out half your sats out of your channel, you can now receive that whatever amount you spent and, and then you'll be full again. So there's a, there's a balance that goes on where you have to empty your channel at least some way. You don't have to empty it all the way in order to receive money, but you have to empty it somewhat so you can receive some. Uh, and this, uh, yeah, it's kind of a balance of if you're gonna if you're gonna have money in the Lightning Network, um, it's it's for payments. You know, it's because you want to spend your bitcoins, um, and that that's that because you have to do that in order to receive anything on it. Yeah. So half the job for routing nodes like Bob here is to actually manage those balances so that you can capture um, so some of the larger payments that go through. You kind of predict, well, is Carol going to be receiving lots of funds? Maybe I should increase my local balance to Carol so that I can send more funds her way. Okay, some additional notes on routing. The fees that you charge are public. And you'd be able to see those on a, a site like 1ml.com. There's uh, both a flat fee that you could charge and a parts per million fee rate, which uh, on, on some, uh, on some uh, user interfaces, it's called MSAT per SAT. I think is a confusing uh, unit. I'd much rather deal with parts per million part fee per million SATs routed. So uh, kind of a standard fee rate that you might experience on the Lightning Network is one sat plus 100 PPM payment, for example. And uh, those fees can be changed at any time. In summary, uh, routing nodes are getting passive Bitcoin income. So you have to maintain inbound and outbound capacity in order to route payments. Routing nodes don't really know the ultimate origin or destination of those payments. Uh, they kind of only know where, where, this, where this payment is going, the next hop. So these are Tor routed, they only know the adjacent channel details. And the incentives are for high uptime, long lasting channels. So you wanna be you know, active all the time. If there's a failure, um, usually routing nodes will kind of route around if there's a recent failure so they don't have to explore. And can you briefly share what the scoring method is at the moment for, uh, no, for this lightning nodes that, right now? There's a whole bunch of um, kind of scoring methods uh, that are being explored right now. Um, let's see, Lightning Pool uses um, Boz scoring after like Alex Bosworth and Balance of Satoshis. Yep. Uh, so and, and that, that metric for scoring is actually opaque. Uh, no one knows what exactly his algorithm is for scoring, but that is the score. Uh, but then there's other scoring methods, which are looking at betweenness. So how many, how many uh, like nodes on the network um, is is your node between? Uh, so are are you in the middle of the network or or where are you? Interesting. So measure of your, of your connectivity is, that would be another way. It sounds like the, another way of putting that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like how many how many nodes could you reach? Um, but the, there's a whole bunch of ways to to kind of evaluate this, and it's going to change. Uh, I think the the autopilot just changed in the most recent version of LND. Um, so it will be when you use autopilot. Hopefully, it will be better because currently, it, I mean, in the past it has been awful. I would always avoid autopilot. Like, don't let an algorithm choose channels for you because you can logic this out and choose some good channels for yourself. Okay. Uh, questions on routing um, before I move on. This last section is pretty quick. Go for it. Okay. 
Uh, where is the Lightning Network headed? One big thing that came out is liquidity marketplaces. I've already talked a bit about this, uh, but uh, inbound liquidity is the valuable commodity. You want other nodes to open channels to you and kind of point their sats at your node. So you can buy inbound liquidity, which you can do this through Lightning Pool, which that's a blind auction. And right now there's, it's only uh, available via command line, but I think some user interfaces are coming out for that. There's also Lightning Liquidity Bot. I've written about this on satbase.org. Um, and so you can read that article. It's quite easy to use. Um, maybe a little bit uh, easy to use compared to uh, Lightning Pool. Um, and you don't need to earn some status before, before using it like you do on uh, Lightning Pool. You can also sell inbound and you can use uh, Lightning's, Lightning Labs' other product, which is Lightning Loop. And you can sell inbound to them, which allows you know, retail uh, stores to continue to receive payments via Lightning. Don't forget Chain Market. That's another one of those um, liquidity marketplaces where you can uh, earn, where you can earn an income by um, tra either uh, transferring bitcoins from the Lightning Network to the base layer, or vice versa, transferring bitcoins from the base layer to the Lightning Network and uh, taking a fee either which way. Fantastic. I haven't used it, so I won't be uh, speaking about it. But uh, that's that's super good to know. What is it called again? Chain market? Is that correct? Yeah, I will put a link in the in the chat for um. Yeah, go ahead. For people awesome. to look into it. It's developed by the same guy who made LNTX bot. Oh, okay, nice, nice. And uh, lastly, I'll talk about a little bit about Strike. Uh, what they're doing, they're, they're allowing <laughs> zero fee transactions on the Lightning Network. Um, it's basically Venmo. So this is a, it's a fiat system. So, so you're sending, you can send dollars and they would be received as potentially euros if you're sending to Europe. Um, they will be adding more countries uh, as time goes on. I think they've got a trial going on at global.strike.me. So what they're doing right now is setting up an international settlement layer. Right now they have remittances, uh, or Strike enables remittances. You can send value uh, essentially anywhere in the world once they're, uh, once they're completed with their beta. And uh, I mean, this is a huge, huge market. Uh, the several, many billion dollars are are transferred from country to country. And this is gonna uh, allow that to happen in real time for no cost. The next step, which is sort of my prediction, is with this same infrastructure that they have set up, uh, you can do high frequency trading. Um, so this is something that Wall Street will be looking at whole lot because they spend a whole bunch on infrastructure like fiber optic cable like from Chicago to New York just so that they can uh, you know make those trades quickly and uh, nothing is uh, faster at final settlement than the Lightning Network. So with that uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, let me know if you have any other questions. Yeah thank you very much man that was awesome. What a great uh in-depth overview. Any uh, questions um, on any topics for Justifer while we uh, still have him here? I didn't have any questions, but I also wanted to thank him. That was a good presentation. Thanks so much. Uh, if, if you want to learn more, feel free to check out satbase.org um, for some you know, additional tips and tricks to save you some sats uh, when you're running as a routing node. What is your uh, favorite project that is um, using the Lightning Network for something right now? Ooh. 
That's a tough one. Um, I'm really excited about the exchanges actually rolling out uh, Lightning. That's going to enable a massive amount of commerce. Um, so I think we saw, was it OKCoin OK that just added Lightning? Uh, River Financial has Lightning and Bitfinex. And I've been using those as swap services for a while, uh, which has allowed me to earn some uh, you know, much more significant routing income other than just routing payments. But in the buying and selling of liquidity, uh, I think that's really where the money is for routing nodes. Um, yeah, OKCoin okay did just announce that, and they also joined um, Kraken announce, has announced it. The, the, um, the ones which have implemented it so far are Bitfinex and uh, River, um, and there's, a, there's, a, there's at least one other one that's, that's implemented it. But then Kraken and OKCoin okay and Bit, Bittrex, Bit, Bit T Rex, I'm not sure how they pronounce that, also uh, are three additional ones that have announced it. Oh, and um, Coin Corner in the UK is another one that already implemented it. Yeah, over yeah, uh, uh, Obi and um, uh, Danny over at Coin Corner did. Yeah, I, I think they're going to have a tremendous amount of potential because that just is where all of the liquidity is going to be, whether we like it or not. I mean, we don't want it KYC, but you know, too bad. That's just the easiest onboard. I also like. Um, uh, um, thinking from this perspective as well, um, just for the little bit of mining that we do here, um, the possibility of receiving minute by minute payments directly from a potential pool via Lightning, um, I think that's I think that could be extremely powerful and really um, flatten out the volatility for miners on their income and paying their bills. It, it works a lot better if you have uh, minute by minute income rather than getting a lump sum every 10 days so that's hey Max, there's a guy who wanted me to let you know that he's in wait he's waiting to get in and he's in the uh in the queue or whatever it's called yeah let, oh my god i'm right here there we go now he's in hey uh, Max, Max, you can change that setting so people don't have to wait in the waiting room too if you want to can I? I i can change that on there yeah just go to zoom and settings and you can change it that way people could just pop in when they want to all right perfect yeah i'll, I'll play with that but the, the last uh, the other project that I neglected to give a shout out to is uh, Thunderhub. They've got a just, it's, uh, it's total eye candy uh, as far as just checking up on your node and seeing where your channel, channel balances are um, and allows you to do circular rebalances so you can kind of move liquidity around between your, your different channels. Um, super cool uh, visualizations, and I think there's a lot more to come from uh, Apot Devin, which is the, the developer there. Is Thunderhub the Blockstream Lightning balancing tool that I see? It is separate from Blockstream. Understood. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. Oh, uh, from from Blockstream, there might be some uh, liquid stuff that that is uh, that that might integrate with Lightning at some point. Because uh, kind of what Super Testnet was alluding to is um, you can uh, actually get different tokens other than uh, you know Sats uh, when when routing or. You know, there's there's tons of integrations that, that could happen that aren't happening right now. So I'd, I'd look for that from Blockstream. Um, but anyways. Blockstream yeah. also makes the C Lightning tool, which is another, um, an alternative. It's, the, it's actually the second most popular Lightning um, implementation other than LND. Uh, I, uh, the one I ha had on my node until I got Umbral, um, the one I had running was a C Lightning. Um, node. Nice. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of having multiple implementations active. Um, so otherwise, it's uh, it would just be one company deciding what's best for the network, and it's good to have some competition there. What are you running um, for all of your routing, and which, um, 
which program do you like using, you know, which interface do you like using best to balance your channels or to make payments? So what are you using right in right now? And um, what are your uh, favorite uh, programs to manage all that stuff with? I know you alluded a little bit to um, Thunderhub. Yeah, I, I use Thunderhub for just about everything. Um, and uh, my Raspy Blitz is my my hardware of choice. Um, OpenOMS is just a, a juggernaut as far as a developer and, and being present and answering questions. Um, he does some uh, amazing work with, uh, with Rootsall. And uh, yeah, they, I, I just, I love the project and it's, you know, now I'm like comfortable enough that I can like break some things and I'll be able to fix them for the most part. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a huge community that is able to help me troubleshoot. So that's the part that I like the best um, about Raspi Blitz is that there's a massive community. Whereas for um, some of the other plug and play nodes, uh, you might be relying on one company or a smaller community to help you troubleshoot issues. So I've noticed some people using like Umbral, for example, are you know struggling to to troubleshoot those things because they're not they're not in the nitty gritty. Whereas like Raspi Blitz, there's like thousand other people that have run into that problem before and could help you troubleshoot. Yeah, I, I love Raspi, uh, what um, Open Noms uh, has done. And um, I, I actually failed. So I failed just completely on uh, Staticus's walkthrough to set up your own node with, with Lightning. I think it was C Lightning at that time, or maybe even a clear. I, I don't remember. Um, but Oh yeah, Raspberry Blitz again for people running um, running a node or looking to get into running a node. Um, Raspberry Blitz is a great great platform for uh, all different instance or, um, all different programs to interface with your main network Bitcoin and your Lightning Bitcoin. I want to give a shout out also to um, RTL Ride the Lightning. That's a great um, uh, uh, interface um, as well. I know people like to um, uh, use too. Um, any other? Oh no! Go, uh, um, go ahead, Jessifer. Sorry to interrupt you. I oh, want to see what no. else I have questions for <laughs> no, you. Uh, yeah, when uh, when Thunderhub doesn't work, RTL is a is always my fallback, and it has been uh, been very reliable for me. I noticed too. Um, what I'm finding what I'm finding here is after listening to Citadel Dispatch um, uh, earlier today. And I noticed this as well, getting into Lightning a couple of years ago, it wasn't so much an issue in 2018 and 19, but it is becoming one now. Um, you really got to be careful of who you're actually connecting with on the network so you don't have any issues um, on possible um, you know, channel closes. So maybe somebody just kind of playing around with it um, on a old Raspberry Pi, um, and it's not a, a stable connection, um, you know, you could have issues. I, I just find that a little bit of a paradox because isn't this what we're trying to overcome is the trusted nature of connecting with people and we want to do it in a, in a trustless way. And we can use certain things like, you know, Lightning Pool and, and um, uh, Lupin and all the other, other tools um, like that, but what, but just what, what are your thoughts on like the growth of that? Like, do I have to double check who I'm connected to? Cause I don't want to, I don't want my channel to close or do you feel pretty open on, on trusting people in a, in a free and open manner? So I'm i uh, I'm an admin of, of the uh, LN balance channels uh, group, which, so in order to set up those balance channels, we're primarily using a trust method. So we're sending them on-chain funds and in the hopes that they will uh, open a Lightning channel and push funds to us. Uh, that involves a lot of trust, especially when you're getting into the larger channels that we call Wumbo channels. So those are above 16.7 million sats, uh, which is quite a bit of money uh, to, to trust someone with. Um, and so we've, we've kind of like, uh, while you know trustless methods are really awesome, and I want to see more growth there, uh, having 
having a trusted system and having channel peers that you know is super helpful um, because then you, you don't have to worry so much about them trying to cheat you. Um, and if things go wrong, like uh, for example, recently I was unable to close channels myself. Um, and, uh, and so I was relying on other people to close the channels for me. And so having a line of communication to them was really helpful. I've heard that was been very helpful on uh, people connecting to or, uh, in the background and using strike or any other payment methods in uh, Chicago what Jack has been working on. You know, these guys have, let's make it up. They have 400 Bitcoin in this lightning channel that they're sending back and forth to each other on certain arbitrages. God forbid. Okay. Tor V3 addresses go down. No pun intended there. Um, but uh, now you have, you know, your channel collapses. You simply call up the broker or your hedge fund down the street. Hey, I see our channel collapse. Just send me a mainnet, you know, transaction. All right, fine. You know, we'll pay the, you know, we'll pay the miners, what, you know, whatever it is, plus whatever your, you know, closes. So it does like exactly what you said. It seems like it really helps to know your counterparties um, in this case, not necessarily acquired, but definitely helps. Thanks for your, thanks for your answer. Sure. Good question. And I suppose, I suppose, uh, in regards to that Citadel dispatch, the Matt O'Dell's show that everyone should watch, I think Matt O'Dell has talked about it's the next, the maturing of Lightning will be kind of the professionalization of these Lightning channels. So you will have multi-million dollar Lightning channels between exchanges that will have like legal documentation so they won't be able to force close that without doing kind of fiduciary responsibilities to in order to close that channel. So that'll be quite interesting as well to see how that plays out going forward. I'm really excited to, to see that, that type of development. Uh, I, I wholeheartedly believe that there's going to be a massive amount of businesses coming into the lightning network that, you know, want to enjoy those features that, that it has with instant settlement and really low fees. Um, and, You've got anonymity or pseudo anonymity. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's really attractive. Um, and uh, yeah, so my attention is very much on uh, who's going to be moving into the Lightning Network and what sort of tools are they going to need to to do their work. Joe Biden, I want my light. I want my uh, stimulus check paid in my uh, 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 LN URL. <laughs> uh, QR code. I'll, I'll I'll post that on my uh, on my uh, page for you. You can all you gotta do is scan that, and I'll I'll, I'll see that on my channel. I mean, Max, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're jo I mean, you're joking, eh? But think about the the um, the cost saving from a government point oh of my view. God. Issue of yeah. million dollars. You know what I mean? I mean, they they have. I, I've heard stories that the first six hundred dollar check, people haven't even received that yet, let alone their next stimulus check. You know. I remember listening to Jack Mahler's talk about um, the way he's he's using the free free to him infrastructure provided by just volunteers who run lightning nodes and and Bitcoin nodes all around the network because like he was talking to VCs from Visa and they were like or, uh, and, and Visa not VCs from Visa VCs and Visa and they were like well it has to cost you you know since he uh, it has to cost you thousands to to manage all this whole network of uh, of payment payment channels and stuff, and and you have to it has to cost you thousands of dollars to do like um, derivatives and like uh, currency conversions and stuff. And he was like, it doesn't cost me. Everyone's running Bitcoin and Lightning nodes for the for free because they're volunteers and they just like the network. So I just use their nodes to send my things over and buy and sell Bitcoin as a hobby. I use them to provide the liquidity and it doesn't cost me a dime to do all these things. The Visa pays, you know, millions of dollars setting up servers and infrastructure and um, and stuff. And he's just like, Yeah, I can do all that for free. <laughs> so Powerful. Just, Powerful. Just, yeah, just what a slap in the face. What just what a absolute, you know, shove it, shove it where it hurts on the legacy side for these people. They're, oh man, what they what what they have uh, uh, is just a cradling cradling system to to watch like that. 
Any other questions? Uh, just I suppose one last. I'm not. Um, I'm not that. Um, I don't know a lot about lightning. What's your? What's the? Is Watchtowers? Is that coming soon to lightning, or is that already been released? What's the kind of story behind Watchtowers on lightning? Uh, Watchtowers are available, um, and uh, they have been for for quite a while. Um, oh, nice. Let's see. Yeah, they they are uh, pretty low not cost not. to run. Um, oh, sorry, what was that? I was just saying that the, they they've been available since two thousand eighteen, but they're not they're not very popular, um, which is which is a part uh, that seems to be because um, people tend not to use things until they're needed. Um, as we saw, uh, exchanges didn't integrate, didn't start integrating Lightning until fees rose above ten dollars. You know, just as an example, because then people started putting pressure on them to find ways to lower the fees. And with with watchtowers, when you use one, typically you you pay the you pay the watchtower a fee to guard your channels if you go offline. But there's there's no there's no usage of them. Like no one, um, they they guard you against certain um, attacks that can happen when you're offline. Uh, if you have a node that goes offline, and all the people who are running Lightning nodes, they tend to just you just stay online. And you don't need to watch. You don't need to pay them a fee, you know. Um, and so no one, no one's. It seems like they're not needed right now, and uh, and no one's using them. Uh, but they're available. You see, uh, Lightning has one called um, Eye of Satoshi. Uh, LND has one called I think uh, uh, not optimistic. Um, What's the, uh, the altru altruistic? They have something called altruistic watchtowers, and then BLW has one called Olympus Server, which is a watchtower. So those are those are three that I'm aware of. I think there's there's another there's a, a, there are a couple of others, but, but just uh, they're, they're out. And no one uses them. One one thing to note about that is that you don't know who is running a watchtower. Um, so if if you're in the mood to try and cheat someone that is offline, uh, you might have to contend with a, a watchtower, which would steal the entire balance of, of the lightning channel and give it to the victim of you, whoever you were trying to cheat. So it's, it's pretty scary just to have the existence of watchtowers to kind of uh, uh, scare away of potential attackers that might try and take advantage. Yeah, I, I think just the, the sheer fact of the possibility that this channel could have a watchtower, you know, you know, you know, you know, observing um, should should be enough to. Good point. I, I kind of feels just like the Chinese state or something like that. It just feels like a very you know surveillance state to say you know you better. You know, you better watch out, or else you're going to lose all your fun if you do something stupid. But I, I think it's I think it's well needed for proper incentives to make make sure everybody stay stays on the straight and narrow. Well said. Right. Yeah. There's a there's a bit of bluffing going on. If if watchtowers aren't that prevalent, uh, if someone asks you if you run a watchtower, you should emphatically say yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. I have Satoshi. I'm running. It. Check out oneml.com. <laughs> I run all three. I run all three implementations. That's all. It has watchtowers built in is Electrum. Uh, if you use an Electrum node uh, or an Electrum Bitcoin wallet and you set up Lightning within it, um, the the Electrum servers who who do most of the most of the heavy lifting on the Electrum network also serve as watchtowers over any Lightning channels that are opened on the elect Electrum um, network, and consequently, um, as Electrum usage grows. Uh, watchtower usage should grow because it's it's by default and automatic that you have one if you use Electrum. Fantastic. Interesting. I, um, I have a couple quick questions for you. Um, I, if I want to start using Lightning right now, like at this very moment within the next 5-15 minutes, uh, what's the fastest and easiest way right this second I can get on Lightning? Blue Wallet. Blue Wallet. So we have done a Blue Wallet tutorial uh, before several of these, including the lightning uh, portion of that. Uh, we will have that up on our uh, page um, uh, uh, in, in the coming uh, weeks. So that's the best. I, I agree. My, my favorite is 
um, if somebody's saying, well, what's lightning? All right, download Blue Wallet, open it up, you know, I'll throw you a hundred sats, a thousand sats and, you know, go and, you know, feed some chickens or something like that, you know, do, <laughs> you know, go and do something uh, uh, productive. Um, DC has a question in the chat. Uh, not not oh, Phoenix. I think I've, I've tried to use Phoenix like once. Um, I think uh, Blue Wallet is my favorite just startup that, as far as flow just to get onto Lightning. Um, but maybe someone else can speak about Phoenix. I, I can't speak on Phoenix. I have not used it yet. I'm on um, iOS. So that is Blue Wallet uh, capable for Apple. Um, Breeze is the non-custodial lightning implementation for uh, um, Apple. And I know Phoenix is for Android. I believe they're also on F-Droid um, as well. That is also uh, non, I believe they're not custodial. Um, they connect over um, to your node. Um, a side note, Blue Wallet also connects. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Jessifer. Blue, uh, Blue Wallet also connects over to uh, your node uh, as well if you choose, I believe through Thunderhub. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't used Moon Wallet um, either, so I, ha I can't comment um, on that. I've heard Phoenix, though, is excellent to onboard people with uh, Android. I mean, just I'm my personal. Um, my two, I have two nephews and a sister who are who all have used Lightning. Uh, well, I don't know if my sister has, but my two nephews I onboarded using Breeze and BLW Wallet, which are both non-custodial. And my sister, I on I gave her a, a Phoenix Wallet, but I never ended up sending any sets to it. So I don't know. I don't think she's used Phoenix, but uh, it, what, what setting it up was as smooth a process as anything in the Bitcoin space. It, Turn it on. It asks you to write down twelve words, and then you off you go. Uh, you can start receiving on Lightning or and sending it. Uh, um, and there's uh, it is it is non custodial with an asterisk. Um, there is one function I forget if it is it's it's one of their swap functions when you're swapping from uh, the base layer of Bitcoin to the Lightning layer or vice versa. Uh, one of those on their on their um, platform is custodial and if you, like if I forget which one it is but uh, if it's the one where you send from the base layer to lightning then you're actually sending sending the coins to them and they hold custody of them for five seconds or so while they while they send you an equivalent amount of lightning or on, on the lightning network um, well, so I, I forget which direction it is well thanks for that I, I didn't I didn't know that I mean I've only played around with Phoenix wall a bit and um, no issues at all. I mean, I've seen people sending and receiving two, three hundred pounds or euros in Lightning. So it was fast and easy. And it was uh, obviously yeah. back in the wallet handled all of the opening of the channels and everything else. It was quite a seamless experience. Yeah, I agree. I've, uh, I've quite enjoyed um, the videos of Phoenix. I've, I only ever, I never actually used it though, because I set it up for my sister and then never sent her any money on it. So, um, you know, we got through the process of writing down the, the words and I was like, okay. And then, you know, I, I, I was going back to Puerto Rico. So I was like, well, I'll send you some Bitcoin when I get, when I get there. And then I never did. Uh, I just, I gave, I, when I came home for Christmas, I gave her a paper wallet instead that had her sets on it. So, um, yeah, but it was cool though. I, I, it has great, there's great videos, and everyone's everyone talks the world of it. And, um, I think it look it looks great. So. Any other questions? Well, no, no other questions. Um, again, thank you, Justifer, for uh, coming out and doing this, man. Everybody, again, go and check out uh, satbase.org. And look through Justifer's blog posts. Go and follow him on Twitter. It's at uh, Justifer underscore BTC. I'll put that in the chat um, as well. And also go and follow BTC Kindergarten. Um, they have a YouTube channel. They have a Discord page. Their meeting actually starts um, momentarily, I believe, at about 9 o'clock our time, uh, Eastern Standard Time, um, on Discord. Uh, but it's also uh, recorded locally at, um, I'm sorry, it's recorded 
um, and thus put on YouTube and also in the RSS feed. So if you have any podcasts um, that you like to listen to. So again, Jester, thank you very much, man. Thanks so much for having me. This was a pleasure. Quick question. Yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. It's it's, uh, not directly related to the presentation, but Max, we're this recording you made of this presentation tonight, where do you store that at? I am going to put, put that on YouTube. The moment that the meeting ends, it automatically starts downloading the recording. So I will go, so once we end the meeting, I'll, I'll throw it up on our YouTube page and I will put that um, in the chat as well. I, I see, I didn't even do that yet. So um, okay. that's where I'll put it. I, I was talking with super as well. I want to go and put it on somewhere in case all of our, all of us, you know, maxis get bl a banned off of YouTube. So yeah. we're trying to find like, you know, video, you know, you know, storage places that uh, can handle that storage and bandwidth and, you know, or host it locally or who knows, but th oh. this YouTube crackdown is, is, is uh, it ha has got to, got to come at, at some point. Oh, so, so you, you think that YouTube's going to uh, crack down on the Bitcoin maximalists, huh? Uh, I mean, <sighs> Justin, what do you think? I mean, I'm just, I'm just joking. I, I don't think that'll ever happen. I'm just. Everyone's a scammer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> okay, so I, was, I was headed somewhere with that, comp, with that question. And so I would ask Justifer, um, I run a small group a meetup group on Sunday nights and they might be interested in this presentation. So I'd love to have you come and present it, but if you can't, are you okay with me using this recording? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. I'm very happy to, to share the recording um, and uh, the slide deck. If other people want to give the presentation is available on sapbase.org and you can pay a thousand sats and get the, the PDF slides. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. I downloaded the uh, PDF slides. I paid. Uh, uh, I, I paid you quite handsomely, and thus I paid myself back that thousand cents from a restack. So, <laughs> as you should. That's great. I'll check out your uh, site for sure. And, so uh, and going back to your question, Rick, I think what's interesting is a lot of Bitcoin maximalists, quote unquote they do share a lot of similar views in regard to sovereignty and things like this. We are quite anti-authority. So I can see a lot. I can see a future where we would be, maybe our political videos may get taken off YouTube. Yeah, no, I, I you know what I, now that I think about it, it is very possible that they might come after Bitcoin people because they don't want anybody having any deviant thoughts, you know, other than what's politically accepted, politically correct. And definitely the Bitcoin people are not, like you say, you know, we are looking for a, a better new world. So yeah, quite possible. You tweet stack sets, right to jail. You tweet yeah. have fun staying poor, right to jail, right away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty excited about layer three for this stuff. Uh, Cause uh, you know, right now we've got, we've got key send messages. So you can send other nodes messages that are, you know, encrypted within your payment. Um, so you can send those to other nodes, but you can also send like code or, um, or potentially you could even send a, a file in the future. So you could have sort of this like peer to peer, uh, like file storage network, which is paid on the lightning network. Um, so I'm really excited about that, that possibility that, that could emerge and then self-hosted, encrypted by default, uh, all the, you know, Bitcoiners wet dreams. What is that called? Uh, I was, uh, th this is not existing quite yet. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's just hypothetical of what you're just yeah. rolling around on potentials. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I agree. That is, there is so many things. Uh, that we have yet to think of, let alone the things that we have. Uh, there's a lot of potential here. And Jester, are you, are you referring to uh, RGB when you refer to layer three? Yeah. I, I personally do. Um, j just from my work trying, trying to implement RGB for my things. Um, but uh, 
I, I think we're going to find that it's much more than just lightning as a third layer, which is only RGB. I think there's going to be other side layers uh, that are either. It's not only to RGB to... deal. These are also um, third layer. Money socket is third yeah, layer. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are. Um, one thing that I've been really um, enjoying a lot lately and talking with people about is Atlenium. Have you heard of Atlenium, Jester? No, I haven't. I'll put a link in the chat to that as well. Uh, it is a clone of Ethereum that is built on top of the Lightning Network. So any any contract you can do on Ethereum, you can also do on Atlenium, uh, and and then have it have the payments be in in. Uh, in sats um what's well, this is what fiat jaff works on i i hadn't yeah <laughs> i hadn't heard it pronounced that way <laughs> oh how, how would you hear it pronounced i i you know i don't know that i've ever heard anyone say it out loud before so <laughs> <laughs> well that's yeah I, I haven't either but um that's how i figured it should I, that's what that's what i read that and that's what those are the sounds that come into my into my mind um so one one interesting thing about Atlenium, uh, it's one guy running this copy of Ethereum on on his local um, server, and so he calls it uh, the, a global open source platform for the centralized applications, which I think is is a hilarious way of putting it. Of course, it's open source code, so anyone can run anyone can run it. But uh, right now, it's just it's just him running running Ethereum on his own, which is like. <laughs> You know, I, I think it's hilarious. But there, are, I'm working with some people who are writing, um, writing contracts on there, including uh, a copy of Hoddle Hoddle slash Bisk. Uh, we're writing a copy of that that runs over the Lightning Network, um, and the back end is actually already done. It's like with the entire back end of uh, Bisk and or Hoddle Hoddle, written in like 90 lines of code, and then I'm helping build a front end for it. So uh, really looking forward to getting the uh, and a way to peer to peer trade from fiat, from fiat currency to Bitcoin on the Lightning Network um, uh, using this using this thing, which is cool. That's very cool, bro. That's fantastic. Why use a separate coin when you can just use stats? Exactly, yes. <laughs> I think it's just funny that he like, he was like, all right, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, um, it's it's the way we're going to beat them is by copying their entire code base and just and just running a, a straight up port of Ethereum where we swap out the coin with with Sats. Just like I don't know, I think that's kind of uh, rather silly, but uh, but it's fun. You know, it's helping me learn how to how to write stuff. So I like it. Pouring over other people's code, looking for bugs. You know, 